Good afternoon. Thanks for joining me on Edible Eric Eats. Today we're talking about cheese. Everyone loves cheese. Everyone knows cheese. Cheese is one of those things that's not too complicated to make. You just need to practice to get really good at it. It's a simple cheese that everybody can make as long as you have a couple ingredients. You need milk, you need a strainer, you need some salt, and you need some vinegar or lemon juice. And the distinction there would be what your end product is going to be with the cheese. Like if we were making ricotta for a ricotta pie or a dessert application, you might want to go with the lemon, but you want to be careful that because it will impart some, you know, that, that lemony citrus flavor. So I'm all set up, we're ready to go. We're gonna make some ricotta cheese today. It's a real simple cheese. To make this, you need a thermometer. We have um, eight cups of milk. You'll see how easy this is once it heats up and once it gets to where it needs to be. You can take out, like I said, you can take out like two cups, put some, some heavy cream in there if you want a little bit creamier, but we're just sticking with these standard issue stuff. So first thing you want to do, you always want to heat up your cheese. Uh, you're going to heat it to about 180. You don't want to boil it. You don't want to go too far because you don't want to kill the ends, like the bacteria and whatnot that are in there. You don't want to completely kill it. You don't want to, you don't want to ruin it. If you take it to the brick, if you boil the cheese, it's not going to work for this. The ultra pasteurized, Milk's products will not work for this. Now we're just gonna heat this up. Um, as you can see, I have my candy thermometer in here because it's the only one I have that works well enough. I'll chime in when it gets to 180 degrees. I'm, I'm only like 125 degrees. We're just about there. I'm almost there, I'm at 170. And you see, the reason the chef, why a chef is mixing it is he doesn't want those casein proteins to set. Because again, if they do, then they capture the steam and then it boils over. And I don't think he wants to wash his stuff. No, no, I don't. I don't think my wife wants me to dirty it. Our milk mixture has hit 180 degrees. I'm gonna pull it off, set that aside. Now to this, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, just a little bit. And you always add a little bit of salt, but not too much, because depending on how much you press it or what you do with it, it will, um, you know, you don't want it to be too salty. But this is about three tablespoons of just distilled vinegar. We're gonna mix it in, and you, you'll be able to almost see it almost instantly start to separate. You can see the, the curds and starting to separate from the whey. And like Chef said earlier, uh, ricotta ricotta was usually typically made from, is typically made from the leftover way of making other cheeses. Ricotta means like twice cooked or recooked. But you can see the all the, uh, the curds starting to form. So we're gonna sit here and stir this for about two minutes and then separate the curds from the whey. I think it's separated as much as it's going to. Now, if you watch, we're gonna. I'm, normally, you would do this through cheesecloth. I don't have that, so I took a coffee filter and you pre-wet it. You want to pre-wet it. So we're just gonna take this and essentially pass it all through there, so we can collect. And it takes a few steps. That's hot. Don't touch a pan. Hey, remember, chef, it's about 180 degrees. Yes. <laughs> I learned that the hard way, Chef. I don't claim to be the smartest. So that you can see, it will take a little bit, but it will, this will all drain out. I'll just do a little bit real quick so you can see. You can see it's, it'll start to clump together. All right, so it's draining a little bit. This is our curds and our whey. I've gotten everything out of the pot. Now it's gonna sit here. Okay. You, can, you can see, uh, you can see it's 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 still, you know, it takes a little while to like completely drain off, depending on, on how thick or you know thin your 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 what you're using. But you can see I've drained it off out of um, out of eight cups of milk. We've gotten maybe what do you say? Maybe a cup of ricotta. If you wanted to, you could eat this straight away. Like you can eat this right now if you want. Typically, you obviously would let it cool, and the more you would you would hang it kind of in your cheesecloth and let it drain off even more depending on how firm you wanted your ricotta to be. Um, if you want it really creamy, you let it you will let it drain maybe like you know five ten minutes. If you want it nice and thick, you let it drain for about you know twenty minutes or so. And this this cheese, if you've ever heard of ricotta salata, is actually um, what they would use 
So they would take that and then let it dry even for, for I'm not sure how long, I think I want to say like three months until it's almost, till it's shavable like, uh, like shaved parm would be. We'll see what it looks like after we let it drain for another 20 minutes or so. It's drained off. You want to use, if you can, use a cheesecloth so you can like hang it and it'll help it drain better. That's why it took so long. So yes. guys, I would I would definitely recommend using um, cheesecloth because you can get around it and, and fully encapsulate the cheese. But I'm doing the same thing. I'm just, it's not as pretty because I don't have cheesecloth in my house. It's been sitting here draining. You can see it's a lot firmer. It's not creamy. <laughs> But this one has been hanging, you know, how long we've been doing this? 20 minutes now? You can see, yeah, so you can see the texture of it. You can see that as it drains off more, it gets harder and harder and harder. Um, but this, you know, this, you again, you can use that. That's fine. That's good to go now. As you can see, it's pretty firm. It's pretty firm. You know, you can see the curds. They're pretty, form they're pr pretty formed. It's ready to go. It's usable. When it's fresh, when it's only been sitting for, you know, five or ten minutes, it's really good for, like, spreading on toast and things along those lines. Uh, if you want to use it for, say, ricotta pie or um, like a filling for, for raviolis, you want to let it drain and get a little bit firmer. It'll help hold up inside of those um, applications. My fresh made ricotta. It's good. It's creamy. It's got that. It's not, it's got a very subtle flavor. It's not very strong. It's more, it's going to be more about what you do with it than, than it is right now. Because right now, it tastes a lot like milk, but it's firm. The, the, the proteins have coagulated and are um, staying together. Uh, which is why we have all this way. And you can see the amount of whey that you get off of that. We had eight cups of milk. We got, what is that, maybe maybe a cup of ricotta. Your fresh made ricotta doesn't take very long. It's, it's pretty cheesy. So enjoy and keep on eating. Hey guys, looking for more? Looking to up your cooking skills? Then be sure to click subscribe so you can follow me while I break down techniques, dish out succulent tips, and show you a variety of recipes for you to learn from so you can not only keep on eating, but eat deliciously. Check out some of the other videos I got for you guys to watch.